So I just got back from uh, class right, right now, and I'm uh, waiting until my 5 p.m. class to uh, do uh, something for my for the Air, Air Force ROTC. But uh, what, the reason why I'm making this video on the Thursday is because the um, when, when I was in political psychology, we were asked to be, to tell about uh, the events that was uh, unfolding across the world. Uh, from what we know. So, there were people saying talk, we're, that we're talking about Manafort, Michael Cajon, and the whole uh, Russian collusion thing, which by the which I'm not saying that uh, uh, those are not worthy events or stories to talk about, to not talk about, but uh, still, still, I was kind of, when I told my own piece, in a way, I felt like I was kind of laughed at. In a way, I kind of was. Because I was talking about the expropriation of land from the white farmers in South Africa. Basically, <coughs> my teacher, she just said, oh, that's something from Donald Trump that he's tweeting. It's not actually what's happening. It's not even in full force yet. And another student actually to, to, uh, for, to uh, add to this decided to say, in the words of Mr. Giuliani, truth isn't truth, which is... Which has been taken out of context, saying thinking that tr that uh, Rudy Giuliani is um uh, trying is basically ignoring the truth when all he's saying is th that not the truth may not be the whole truth and it may be a false truth. So that was the continued that was the part that uh, um got a laugh from a lot of the class and me I was just I was not impressed. It, it, it showed a clear bias. It it was pretty stupid, but uh, it didn't leave me. It didn't leave me to make this video, which is again about the um, uh, expropriation of land. So, in South Africa, a few months ago, the parliament, which is run by the African National Congress, which is a, a left-wing political party, and you might know them know this as us. Uh, Supporting the candidate Nelson Mandela when he was running as the first black president in 1994, I think it was. Um, they basically decided to change the constitution to allow this to to uh, take land without any compensation or very little compensation whatsoever. Now, if you guys don't know uh, what the problem with all of this is. It's because that 70% of the farmland in South Africa is owned by white farmers. Before apartheid even ended, what the white white people who were in control of uh, the economy and even had some political power, wanted the constitutional guarantee that their land will not be will not be taken by anyone. The the, the same land that they have worked so hard to build and to settle. So Nelson Mandela, realizing that this is this would be needed to help South Africa grow its economy and to mend race relations, decided to do that. Now fast forward to 2018, with already five years after the, de the death of Nelson Mandela. Five years. And South Africa has just gone back into a, an apartheid-like state. Only this time, it's tyranny of the majority. Blacks versus whites. Now, I'm not saying that every black is in favor for this in South Africa, but it definitely does give an impression since, uh, since, uh, um, blacks, the, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of the black populations in support of the African National Congress and the African National Congress itself is actually, uh, it's actually uh, helped to pass this bill. Now the now the real uh, sponsors of this bill, uh, aside from the ANC, are the Economic Freedom Fighters, a uh, social, a communist, uh, Marxist uh, political party run by Julius Manella. And I'll try to put a disc put a picture in here somewhere. But if not, well, I'll try to leave a few links in the description box to uh, tell. Talk, talk about him. So, this guy has been very controversial. He, 
for a long time, he's called for, well, the taking of land of, uh, uh from, uh, white farmers, because uh, supposedly it's originally belonged to black people. This, despite the fact that, uh, well, they, the black people haven't really, uh, gone into, uh, like, into agriculture, or, well, decided to agriculture, or, well, to farm the places that white people have farmed. If I've even heard a few, few uh, times that uh, the South Africaners, or the Boers, as you would like to call them, just went into swamps and stuff, and decided to drain it, drain it out, and irrigate it so that they can be able to farm there. Now I'm not sure if it's possible. You're not sure if that's entirely true. Uh, South African history is not fought, not my forte, but nonetheless, it does prove how much. Um, white settlers in South Africa have made an advancement to South Africa even to this day. But to continue on, this guy, Julius Manila, thinks that it is best to take take all that land and give it to to black people, even if they don't know um how to farm it. But that's not the only thing that he's gone gone to for being controversial about. Uh there was a time where he actually said on the news on the news that he, he they weren't calling for the extermination of white people dot 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 just not yet just that that line alone should send chills up down everybody's spine because this guy is Obviously, while he's not calling for it, at least not yet, this is it's obvious that this guy is in favor of white of genocide. It, it's something that no one should should uh, be um in favor for, no matter who it is. Yet this guy actually calls for that, and anyone who tries to uh, think that this tell him that this is crazy, he's called he calls people. Like them, we wrote critics of him, crybabies. Because, well, according to him, um, it, this is a pro supposedly the right thing to do. D despite everything in uh, in South Af South African history that I know, yeah, th it, this guy is completely controversial. I even heard. I even saw an article just today where, uh, where um, Manila actually claimed that uh, Jews were actually training whites to snipe EFF members, which is one anti-Semitic, and two just over the top insanity. This is one of the reasons why I call him the Hitler of, Af of South Africa. He may not be in total power yet, but. I'm I'm afraid of this guy, and I'm living in the United States. I'm really am afraid of this guy, and I'm afraid of the future of South Africa too, because, again, like I said before, so white farmers own the seventy percent of the agricultural land in South Africa. If they take that seventy percent away from from the whites and give it to to uh, the blacks, th it may it may just end up like Zimbabwe, where uh, basically the President Mugabe decided to kick out every single white farmer and uh, give the land to the give land to uh, his own people or uh, own people who weren't black. And look how that turned up. I I'm pretty sure that uh, um Zimbabwe has uh, over four thousand percent inflation. Uh, I can't be the, I can't remember the exact number, but they have been been hit hard ever since Mugabe have has become president back in uh, nineteen eighty five, I think it was. Now I know he's out power now, but nonetheless, it's Zimbabwe remains a shithole. It really does, and it's looking like the, the same fate is is going to happen to South Africa. I hope to God it's not, because I really want South Africa to be something like Nelson Mandela had in mind. Um, a nation that is sees itself 
unified, despite the fact that um, there are whites and blacks in the same country, and are just patriots, civic nationalists. I, I would love nothing more than that. But, in the end, it's just becoming more and more like, uh, like, uh, well, um, apartheid all over again, only it's reversed. Now, President Trump recently has tweeted, uh, um, uh, he has tweeted that he's talked to Secretary Pompeo to look into this situation, and I really hope he does, because, because this is definitely, uh, been, not has been, it has not been a very big issue, especially in the media. It hasn't. I haven't really seen that much. The only one I've actually heard from is Tucker Carlson, who actually spoke out against this, and Sean Hannity, too. Yes, there was also, uh, today where I saw on, uh, the YouTube channel Very Fake News, where, uh, uh, MSNBC talked about this, but they were basically saying, trying to be in defense of something like this. I mean, let's be, let's make it the case, let's look at this completely opposite. If, um, blacks were, uh, the ones who, uh, settled, settled on land and, t and decided to farm in, uh, places like Europe, say if it's alternate history, and white people just wanted to take that back, or, or take it back, would that be a good thing? Would that be moral? And w would it be right? No, I, I don't think it would. The, I think the reason is, is just because this, the reason why they haven't really focused on this is because it doesn't really focus on their narrative. Because, well, the media, the mainstream media has been very, very liberal. And it's been like that for a long time. So, it, it doesn't surprise me that they're going this far. But I hope that uh, President Trump try, tries to deal with this situation and... Maybe take, in the, take the boar's head. Give them refugee status. Those people, I wouldn't mind as refugees. I, I wouldn't. Because I know that they would they would assimilate into the United States, and they would definitely be ones that would actually be productive in, in actually growing the economy of the United States. I wouldn't mind that at all. But, uh, as a response to uh, Donald Trump tweeting to m about... Uh, m Talking to Mike Pompeo about this, South Africa actually mentioned that, uh, that it everything that Donald Trump said is not true, and that the expropriation of land will continue, and this is land reform and blah blah blah, basically every piece of talking point, and I, I think it's just for them to buy time. It's I don't I don't know maybe maybe it is I, for right now. It's just, the situation is just being investigated. Nothing more. But I hope it becomes something me better. Maybe even uh, sanctions. Uh, Again, South Africa. Because this is a a obviously um, a route to communism, to fascism, and to uh, ethnic nationalism. And ethnic nationalism, as a person who happens to identify as a civic nationalist, is something that I don't like. Because it's basically exclusive and it doesn't really uh it, it doesn't really uh build up the idea of a nation state it just focuses on racial um divisions that's all so i really hope that there would be something coming up out of this maybe donald trump would put pressure on the south african government to try to stop this once and for all but again like i said before it's just it, it's too early to tell I hope to God that this does happen. Because whether you're white or black, this should not be what, what, this should not happen to you. You have, they have, no one should have the right to take what you have without any compensation whatsoever. That is immoral, and I think it's illegal it, it, on an international scale. I, I don't really know that much about international law, but it wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me if the UN made something like that. <coughs> Which is kind of ironic, because the UN should be denouncing South Africa for this. Now, again, I think it's going to end up like uh, Zimbabwe, or 
where uh, there's uh, starvation and there's uh, high unemployment and there's a, a stagnated economy. But there could be another worse way this could end. And I'm talking about Rwanda. Now, for those uh, who haven't been born back in 1994, and I sure as hell wasn't, back, I was born in 1996, Rwanda faced a massive genocide. There were two groups, the Hutus and the Tutsis. The Tutsis were known as the noble class. In fact, even when they were, uh, they became a colony for Belgium in Africa, they were still uh, the, the elite inside that co country. But the Hutus were the peasant class. And they made up the majority of the entire country. Not a very good um, recipe for uh, creating a nation. In the end, it just... Um, when uh, Rwanda was finally given its independence, the sides were clashing with each other. And it was only a matter of time until, basically, the Rwandan genocide. I think it was 2 to 4 million... Um, Tutsis were killed as a result. And many of them very graphically. I, I There were those that uh, were killed with by uh, machetes and just... I, I, don't, I honestly don't want to get into that. But the point is, South Africa just could easily turn into something like that. Replace the Tutsis with the whites and the Hutus with the blacks. Now, I, again... I'm not one that is predicting of this, but considering the situation that South Africa is currently facing, it wouldn't surprise me too much. It really, it really wouldn't. For anyone in South Africa, whether you're black or white, I urge you to put an end to this. Because this, is, this will not help your economy. This will not help your country. It will only destroy it. My name is Noah Mian on The Ark Truth. Please post your comments down below, like this video, subscribe, and share with your friends. Bye.